But if we truly want to make America great again, it's not Trump or Kamala. It is you. If you want to make America great again, it starts with you. Welcome to the Bedros Koulian Show. Welcome to another episode of the Bedros Koulian Show. I'm Bedros Koulian, and today's episode is about a young man that I ran into at the UFC gym in beautiful Corona, California. So every now and again, I'll work out there in Corona, California at the UFC gym, sometimes at the Brea, um, other times at my own gym, BK Strength. However, this particular story takes place in Corona, California at the UFC gym. I met this young man probably in his early 20s, and he's like, man, I love your show. And I'm curious, when you say average is the enemy at the end of every episode, what do you mean by that? And we got to talking, and I ended up giving him a long sermon that like literally gave him the biggest aha experience, I think, of his life. At least that's what he said. And I could see that it did. And so I want to share that with you because I think that there is a agenda that is being being put on humanity, on society, that is forcing more people to accept average or mediocrity. And and I want to plea my case here. And I want to plea my case. And if I'm wrong, well, then you just kind of feel free to ignore me. And if I'm right, which I know I am, then what I would encourage you to do are the things I'm going to tell you at the end of this episode so that you can break out of the inertia of average. And that's kind of what I started this dialogue with him on. I said, hey, man, when I say average is the enemy, what I'm really telling you guys is that there is this inertia of average that a lot of people are stuck in. And it's not like, you know, you were, you somehow ended up there in averageville. It's not like, everything was going great for you, and then all of a sudden you found yourself in a place of mediocrity. Mediocrity, average, to me, same thing. The way we end up there is really almost engineered from the day that we are born. That's why I call it the inertia of average. And here's what I mean by that. If you, if you look at the word inertia, it's basically, it's physics. And it's an object is either in motion or not in motion, and it will stay in motion until another force is kind of pressed upon it, right? And so, you know this, when you're in a flow state of life, when things are going great for you, you're, it's almost like you're just constantly stacking wins. And then when you get sick or you go on a vacation and then come back and you were letting yourself sleep in a little bit, you were eating sloppy, you weren't getting all your workouts in on that vacation, you come back, you're almost stuck in this, like, man, I can't really get my flow back. You're stuck in this inertia of average, average people. The reason I share this with you is because I think, let me rephrase that, I know that the man, the opposition, wants to engineer an environment for everyone to stay average from the moment they are born. And here's why. First of all, if you stay average, then you are more dependent on the government. If you stay average, then you are easier to control. If you are average, then they could do the thinking for you and tell you how to think. If you are average, you don't have a lot of options. Average people don't have a lot of options in life. If you are average, you don't have the experiences that the wealthy and the successful can have. And don't for a moment, guys, think that the wealthy and successful are the enemy. They're not. You should strive to be wealthy and successful. However, the system is set up to keep you broke, in debt, and dependent on them. And so it's set up that way from the moment you were born because you go back to your parents and their parents and their parents and they were taught a certain way through the school system, right? Go out, get a degree, get a school education. Uh, when you get that degree, you come out, you get a job, that job gives you an average pay. Like no, no one ever says, hey, what does a really good web developer make? What does a really good you know, restaurant manager make? What does a really good customer support, support person make everyone says hey what does the average web developer make you know you'll google the average pay of whatever vocation you're going to go into like you immediately start googling average shit right in life and so your parents were taught to be average by their parents 
by their grandparents, by their aunts and uncles, by their teachers, by their coworkers, by their spouse, by their siblings. And this whole average snowball continues. And if you are average, think about it, there's a lot more of us than there are of them, of the elite, right? And so the way the elite can control the masses is by keeping them oppressed and suppressed, keeping them average, keeping you average, because you don't have a lot of options and choices and, and money to be able to get the things you want in life or to be able to get out of the state that you don't want to be in and get in a better state or position or to be able to make that better choice. And so you're always kind of dependent on the system. You're always in debt. And if you're always in debt and you're always in fear and you're always experiencing uncertainty, these are the weapons that the opposition uses to keep humanity average. And then they've gotten so good at having us become self-policing because then they go, listen, if anyone around you is trying to break out of this average, what do most people around you do when you try and break out and be extraordinary and live your ambitions and your dreams and, and maybe reach for the stars, right? They go, why are you doing that? Isn't that crazy? What if you fail? Isn't that a big risk you're taking with your family? How do you know you're going to make it? Has anyone else done this? You don't even have the education to do this. What makes you think you can make it? They instill so much fear and doubt and uncertainty in you because, again, it's the whole crabs in a bucket, right? The whole idea of crabs in a bucket, when the one crab starts trying to climb out of the bucket, all the other crabs reach down and pull it, pull, pull that crab back down into the bottom of the bucket. Humans have been designed and conditioned to be self-policing that way. And because of that, because when everyone else is rowing in the same way of average and mediocrity, well, and you're trying to go the other way, they go, hey, that's weird, don't do that. It makes me scared, it makes me feel insecure. It makes me feel like you're trying to be ambitious when I'm not ambitious and that makes me feel a certain way. And so they try and get you to get back in line and you're like, you know what, maybe I should get back in line. Maybe I should just hang out after work and drink and do happy hour instead of actually go to gym and work out and, and, and start planning my meals for tomorrow. Maybe I should you know, be a dumb shit and start watching you know, television and sitcoms where men are treated like goofballs and doofuses and just bumbling idiots and they don't know what to do unless the, the, the woman in their life who's this fucking screeching Karen feminist is telling them what to do because all of a sudden somehow all men are doofuses and dopey on television and you get conditioned and programmed to be that way. You're like, well, if that guy's that way and he's on TV, then maybe I need to be this way as well. And so if the school system, the church system, the family support system, the friend system, the entertainment system is all designed to keep you average, you are stuck in this inertia of being average, right? And let's face it, the average man inspires no one. Like if you plan on leaving a legacy, if you plan on inspiring people, if you plan on creating an impact, you plan on influencing humanity in some great way with this idea of the product or service or this vision that you have, you can't be average, homie. You can't because the average man inspires no one, which means you have to break out of this inertia. Now, we know that it's easy to stay in the inertia. And so I got to tell you, like you would never raise your kids in a way and like imagine like your kids are, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years old. You're like, all right, little Bobby or little Susie, I want you to uh, sit down. I got to tell you a story, kid. Um, I want you to grow up and I want you to be average. I want you to have average health. I want you to have an average life. I want you to marry someone average, have average kids, be of average intelligence, uh, be just averagely emotionally and mentally disciplined and make average income and, you know, die an average death. Like no one would encourage their kids to be average. Like we all want our kids to be extraordinary. Go out there and live your dreams, your ambitions, reach for the stars, be extraordinary. Like I want you to have more than I ever did. I mean, you want that for your kids, yet you've accepted did mediocrity and average. It's almost like you celebrate it because I get it. The masses are going, everyone's watching Super Bowl, bro. So I got to watch Super Bowl. And then I got to stand around the fucking water cooler and talk about the commercials during Super Bowl as though you own the fucking teams or you own the network. And like what, but yet, yet, you're, you're complaining about the fact that you haven't lost the weight, you haven't got fit, you keep getting fatter, your, 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 your bank account keeps dwindling away, your relationship has eroded, your kids don't respect you, you, you are effectively invisible as a man. 
walking around because you inspire no one with your gelatinous floppy body. And a gelatinous floppy body comes with a degenerate mental and emotional state, right? So while you would never encourage your kids to be average, I see so many of you out there embracing and celebrating and accepting average as though it's something to be celebrated and it is not. So what do we do then if the entire system the government, the education system, the, the church system, the family system, the friend system, the entertainment system is all set up to keep everybody average. What do we do? Well, first of all, you have to recognize that you're meant for something more. And recognizing it is one thing. Being able to break out of that inertia is another, right? Think about it. when things start spinning very fast, right? The faster something spins, the more difficult it becomes to change directions. So if you've been stuck in the state of average, of mediocre for a long time in your life, you know, you, you work, you barely make your bills, you barely make your rent or your mortgage, you and your spouse are just kind of two ships passing in the night, it's been like this for a long time, you have a little cocktail every night to take the edge off and to escape your realities, maybe you, uh, you know, uh, video games or pornography or some other screen time on Netflix to distract yourself or social media to just get your mind off of your shit life. And then, you know, I got to take a couple of toots of weed or the vape pen to, to quiet my mind so that I could fall asleep only to wake up and hate my life and hate how I feel and know that I'm going to live another life that's underpinned with mediocrity and average and I will never inspire and influence anyone. And this cycle just goes on and on and on like that inertia has set in for you. And with that, your IQ has fallen, your emotional quotient has fallen, your AQ, your adversity quotient has fallen, meaning how much adversity you could deal with, because it's like anything else. You either use it or lose it. So if you haven't used your mind or your body or your emotion, emotional discipline, in a way to become more formidable, to challenge yourself, to, to set up intentional points of adversity and hardship in your life to see if you still have what it takes as a man to earn, to protect, to provide, to preside, to be there, communicate, show feelings, because now you're numb. You're just a shell of a human walking around, right? And I see that so much. And I see that so much. And, and you'll see that in the gyms, man. This is why, by the way, this is a true statistic. 89% of gym members, big box gym members, look the same year after year after year. 89%. That means the other 11% are getting the results. So you can apply that same number to humanity. 89% of people are just doing the same thing in life and expecting a different outcome. They want a different outcome. They crave a different outcome. They, they talk to people about their ambitions for a different outcome, a better outcome in their life, but they're doing the things that constantly produce the shit life of debt and uh, poor relationships and shitty self-love and no real commitment to anything that gives you a sense of meaning or fulfillment or significance. And then the vices and addictions that keep you numb and just dependent on these things, addictions that constantly wear you down emotionally and mentally and don't keep you sharp enough to want to actually have any agency or urgency to take action in any direction really, whether it's your fitness, whether it's your financial status, whether it's your faith or, or your, your, your relationship or doing anything meaningful, going out and joining a, you know, a jujitsu school or some kind of an MMA program or even fucking whatever, you know, getting workouts on a consistent basis that actually show and produce results, right? And eating clean. And that's because you're stuck, you're stuck, you're stuck, you're stuck in average. And so how do we break out of average? Well, you have to understand that average used to be okay back in the day. There was a time, and, and what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to make you allergic to average, guys and gals. I want to make you so allergic to being average that when you start going to these family, average family reunions 
and you do these average things that everyone else does. By the way, if it's if it's something that more than 50% of the population does, it's an average thing, right? So if you're going somewhere and you're like, oh, look, everyone's doing it. It's 4th of July weekend, so everyone's drinking and roasting up hot dogs and deep throating them. Great. Then you're being average too. Oh, look, it's Christmas and everyone's opening gifts, so I'm going to do it. It's you're being average too. And you're like, damn, B, that's pretty hardcore, even Christmas. Yeah, even Christmas, bro. Like, honestly, you can't make tomorrow Christmas for yourself to show gratitude, to be with family. Like you need a day on the calendar to remind you of gratitude. Same with Thanksgiving, of love, of family, of appreciation. And I get it. Yeah, but that's Jesus's birthday. All right. You can't appreciate those of you that are secular and, and love the Lord. You can't appreciate Jesus on a daily basis. I do. I do, Bedros. I read my Bible every morning. I have Bible study that I go to. In fact, on Wednesdays, I do this. And on Sundays, I go listen to the sermon. Okay, then, would you say that Jesus and God sees your body as a temple, his vessel? And if the answer is yes, then how disrespectful are you of your God by destroying and not feeding that temple well, not training that temple well, not not keeping great mental and emotional hygiene for that temple to thrive by creating a, an environment of disease for the temple of Christ, right? I don't care how you try and frame it to me. I don't care if it's I don't have time or I do this, I, I, I do it for Christ. Your body is your temple. And if you don't prioritize it, it will let you down. Because it doesn't matter how much money you make. And I know on my show, I talk about making a lot of money, make a lot of money and do a lot of good with it, right? And we talk about business and marketing and how to develop your business and create multiple income streams and create subscriptions and all these great things and be a great leader and create an empire and sell it for millions of dollars. Well, guess what you can't buy for those millions of dollars? You can't buy good health. You can't buy loyal and loving friends. And you can't buy happiness and peace of mind. All of that are things that you need to build and develop daily starting today for many of you starting a decade or two ago. And before you get in the comments and go like, well, is it too late for me? I'm 36, I'm 46, 56, 76. No, it's not too late. You can start today. You can start building loving and meaningful relationships today. You can start finding and developing happiness and peace of mind by asking yourself, what is my purpose on this planet? What is the meaning of my life? Not meaning of life. What is the meaning of my life? The meaning of your life is to become a better human, to overcome your vices, your addictions, your the abuse and the adversity that you felt and experienced and the traumas that you've gone through and the limiting beliefs that you hold now as a byproduct of that and this bullshit story that you tell yourself that I'm a loser and no one loves me and I'm not lovable and, and people, people don't resonate with, they do, they do. You just haven't put yourself out there. Get out there and work on your health. Get out there and work on your finances. Get out there and work on your relationships. Get out there and figure out what gives you happiness and peace of mind and start building and developing those things. And when you do, you start breaking out of the inertia of average. Hey guys, quick interruption to the show. Let me tell you all about the Truly Wellness Shot. If you're like me and you care about your health, hydration, and building a strong immune system so you can stay active and you can get after it in life, then you want to try the Truly Wellness Shot. I used to take 11 different supplements in the morning, things like vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin B12, echinacea, ginger, and a whole bunch more. Now it's all included in the Truly Wellness Shot. I want to send you a 30-day supply for 50% off. Just go to Truly.com, use the code word BEDROSE, my name, to get 50% off. You'll also get free shipping. You get a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee, and $1 of every order goes to Shriners Children's Hospital. And when you use the code word BEDROSE and do the subscribe and save, which is a Truly Tribe program, every month you'll get a fresh supply of Truly Wellness Shots for an additional 20% off and free shipping and $1 of every monthly order will go to Shriners Children's Hospital. So go to Trulian.com, use code word Bedros and take advantage of this amazing offer. Now back to the show. Because the opposition wants you to stay average as long as possible. And I'm telling you, back in the day, 25, 30 years ago, even as early as 25, 30 years ago, like in the 90s, the early 2000s, like there was a time where it's like, oh, you know, this, this is just an average person. And most average people had a 
They had a house, they had two cars. Uh, maybe this one spouse worked and the other didn't. The husband worked and the wife didn't. And they had a couple kids. Like today, you can't afford any of that shit. Like today, average is you're barely making it in this rented shit hovel that you live in. Your car's a mess, your mind's a mess, your bank account's a mess, your relationship's a mess, you're in massive debt. Your, your kids don't have the education or the life experience that you want them to have. Like average, the standard for average has gotten so low. Like there was a time that, yeah, you know, the average American, you know, you'd hear on the news, the average American has 2.7 kids and a house with a white picket fence and Mr. Jones works and Mrs. Jones doesn't and she's a homemaker and they have a two car, that doesn't exist anymore, homie. The standard for average now is destitute. The opposition has figured out that they don't want you to be average like 20, 30 years ago because that still gives you too much freedom. That still gives you too much ability and access and opportunities. They want you to be oppressed. That is what the opposition wants. They want you to be oppressed. And so they have created inflation. They have created debt. Everything has sped up to the point. Feminism has gotten to a place that... It's forced women into the workplace and gave them the false belief and understanding that they need to compete with men in the workforce instead of doing what is factory installed and God given to them, which is being a mom and a homemaker and a caretaker and, 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 and delivering love, undeniable, unquestionable, beautiful love that no dad can do, not at the level that a mom can. We all know that. See, the people that hate women the most are feminists. I'm going to say that again. Feminists hate the women the most. What kind of women do they hate? They hate women who want to be traditional, women who want to stay home, women who want to raise children. And why is that? Because if a woman stays home and raises the children, according to the core values that this woman and her husband have developed together, those children are more difficult to control and to oppress because this woman is the educator, the caretaker, literally the poor of love and confidence and competency into these children. And so it makes sense that the system create feminism in order to separate women and men's agendas from each other so that they can have greater levels of oppression on the children in the school system. And since mom and dad are both tired from work, and since mom and dad are both exhausted, they have no time or desire to pour into those kids. You see how the system is designed to oppress. And so if we know that, and we know that the average of 15, 20, 25, 30 years ago was no longer that same standard today. Today, average is destitute, it's poverty. Then you have a duty and an obligation. And so if you're like, all right, B, you've convinced me. I realize that I'm stuck in the inertia of average and I wanna break out of this bucket of crabs and live a life of greater meaning, fulfillment, money, significance, health, be a great role model. How do I do this? Well, simple, here we go. Number one, it starts with you. It starts with you, you have to lead yourself. You know, earlier today, uh, right across the hallway here from the studio, from the BK studio, is our Fit Body Bootcamp Learning Center. And we've got about 60 of our Fit Body Bootcamp franchise owners in town doing a quarterly meetup right, uh, franchise owners who wanna have multiple locations, who have and are continuing to build multiple locations. And I was speaking to them earlier, and I was like, hey, it's election time right now. And it doesn't matter if you're voting for Kamala or Trump, like there's only one way to make America great again. Whether you're voting for Kamala or Trump, there truly is only one way to make America great again. Now, you might think that it's to vote for Trump. Now, me personally, I've already voted for Trump. I filled out my mail-in ballot and it's on its way. I've already voted for Trump. However, you can vote for whoever you want. But if we truly want to make America great again, it's not Trump or Kamala. It is you. 
If you want to make America great again, it starts with you. Make a promise and keep a promise to yourself. If you want to make America great again, don't hit the snooze button tomorrow morning. Get up. And if you want to make America great again, get your 30 ounces of water, drink it, go and work out. If you want to make America great again, plan your healthy meals for the day. Stick to your macros, your proteins, your fats, your carbs, so that you can have a lean, healthy, athletic body. Stick to it for a long period of time. How long be the rest of your life? If you want to make America great again, when you do this for a long period of time, you start building confidence. You start seeing your abs come out. You start getting lean and more athletic and jacked. And then all of a sudden, your words mean nothing because your actions speak volumes. The way you show up into a room, a high level of confidence, a high level of charisma, your kids, your spouse, everybody around you is like, this motherfucker walks the walk and talks the talk. I can tell by looking at him. And if you want to make America great again, you would have this influence on your kids. And if you want to make America great again, you would meet up with your spouse at the kitchen table and you would say, honey, what are our family's core values? Why don't we create them and live by these core values and our family's non-negotiables and create them and live by these non-negotiables. And if you want to live, make America great again, then you would share this with your neighbors. You would be a shining example to your neighbors. And if you want to make America great again, you would be a symbol to your community of great humanity. And that would bleed into your city and your state. And one by one, together, we would all make America great again by infecting the entire country with free thinking, financially capable, physically fit, mentally tough, emotionally disciplined, purpose-driven men and women who will not be bullied and pushed around by the opposition who continue to tax you, oppress you, limit your life and experiences, through the school system, through, through the churches, through entertainment, through sports, through all the different things that they want to use to oppress you with their thumb on your neck. That's what they do. And they will cause riots. They will create division. They will create anything they need to to constantly keep us separated, segregated, divided, and angry at each other. Because as long as we are bickering with each other, we're not gonna turn our sights on the opposition who is truly the enemy. You understand that, right? That is how you make America great again. It starts with you. That is how you break out of the inertia of average because soon the people around you who don't want to be fit, free thinking, athletic, manage their time and productivity well, leaders, great communicators, these people will be repelled and they'll leave, but you have to do it long enough to turn them away or turn them onto you, infect them with positivity and optimism and the ability to actually take control of their own lives. But most will be turned away because it's easier to stay in the inertia of average than to break out of that inertia and become a free thinking, independent, sovereign, financially free, mentally and emotionally disciplined man. This is how we break out, guys. This is what you need to do. And I tell you this from firsthand experience, firsthand experience. I've done the work, I've done the healing. Remember, man, I was an immigrant to this country. I came here from the Soviet Union when I was six years old. And when I came here, all I knew, because my dad kept telling me is, America is a land of freedom and opportunity. But then he was like, well, as you're growing up, you like cars, so why don't you go be a smog technician? And I was like, well, I'll go be a smog technician. So I took smog tech certification classes and I realized this is, really isn't for me. I like cars, I like fast cars, I like lifted cars, I like slammed cars, I, I like exotic cars. I don't necessarily wanna work on a car and get greasy and put a fucking probe in a car's tailpipe. But that was the ambition that my dad had for me. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna escape the Soviet Union, come to the United States. And I love my dad to pieces, by the way. Don't for a moment think like I'm talking shit. What I'm telling you is his perception of the American dream was you can get any kind of job you want here, but that is not what I wanted. I knew I was meant for more. And when I started personal training and I started working with people and I started actually talking to them in between their sets and realized that 
I could influence their belief systems and their thoughts and, and their daily habits and actions and how they view themselves. Holy shit, I realized I could be a force of good. And that meant that I had to tighten down my own habits, my own belief systems my day-to-day -day structure and productivity because I had to be a walking, talking example. I couldn't be a walking hypocrite. I couldn't go preaching one thing while living and doing another thing. And it was in that time that I started to break out of the inertia of average in my late 20s, all the way to my early 30s. It took a good two, three, four years because no one sat me down and told me this way. Like tomorrow, boom. You could break out of average by saying, fuck it. I'm going to write down what the extraordinary man looks like to me, the kind of man that I love and respect and admire. I'm going to write that down on this marker board. I'm going to look at it every day. He's a guy that wakes up at 530 in the morning. He works out first thing in the morning. Then he plans his meals and then he does his work and then he does his fucking family time and lives his core values and has his non-negotiables and then, you know, creates content on social media or runs a team this way, whatever it is that that man who is a savage, not an average looks like to you, write him out, create that avatar and live by the habits and the traits and the thoughts and the actions and the deeds that that man would live by no matter what. You didn't sleep well last night. You live by those actions anyway. It's cold. You don't want to work out. You do it anyway. It's too hot. You don't want to work out. You do it anyway. Your tooth hurts, you don't wanna work out, you do it anyway, you get what I'm saying. Whatever barrier that you come up with, that inner critic comes up with, that says, nah, not today, you need rest, just tell that inner critic to shut the fuck up, and you do it anyway, because the advocate is what we need to give voice to and not your inner critic who you've been listening to as though they're somehow fucking rooting for you. The only thing your inner little bitch, your, your negative voice, your inner critic wants is your demise is for you to be accepting of mediocrity. Let's not do much, let's be lazy. Let's not have too many ambitions. Whoa, 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 you can do laundry tomorrow, you can clean your car tomorrow, you can, you can buy your girl flowers tomorrow, you can have hopes and dreams tomorrow, and then tomorrow, that little motherfucker says the same thing again. So your job is to silence the critic and give voice to the advocate. And this is how we do it. This is how we make America great again. This is how you break out of the inertia. You start doing the healing work, the hard work. It's easy to post it on social media. It's hard to get out there and get after it when it's dark and cold and dreary. And I know the weather's getting cold now and I know that it's gonna be rainy and snowy soon. And guess what? We're gonna do it anyway. And guess what? At this point in my life right now, I've got a torn tricep. I've got a bucket tear in my right meniscus in my knee and I officially have a hernia that I'm getting a surgery hopefully mid next month. Even with my hernia and torn tricep and bucket tear in my meniscus, I'm getting after it in every way. I'm not using it as an excuse to slow down, to take time off because I realize that will put me in the inertia of average. I have to keep soaring high. And this is what I'm asking you to do. And if you do this, you become a shining example of humanity to your friends, your family, your community, your city, your state. And one by one, we change the country and the opposition will have no choice but to kneel to our demands, which are what? Lower our taxes, put America first, look out for our citizens first, Stop dividing us. I don't think we have unreasonable asks as citizens of this great country. They make it seem unreasonable when they send $60 billion to Ukraine. They send hundreds of millions to Israel and Lebanon to rebuild. Yet in North Carolina, in Asheville, hurricane hits and they're giving $750 per family to rebuild. There's money, billions of dollars to rebuild roads in Ukraine, but the roads that have been washed out from the hurricane in Asheville, they're still muddy trails. They've gone back to the horse and buggy days and it doesn't seem like our government is stepping up to do anything about it. But you know who is? Citizens, citizens who have money, citizens who, who believe in the American way. 
And I'm so thankful that I work so hard to make a lot of money that I'm able to deploy my money through my buddy Tim Kennedy's organization, Save Our Allies. And he's out there with a whole bunch of people rebuilding, helping. Also, my dear friend, Chad, project graduate, veteran, and great entrepreneur, Purple Heart Pools. He reached out to me. He's like, yo, B, here's a fucking Venmo link. We need money because we're out here in North Carolina helping people stay warm, get food, get clean water. Boom, sending him the money. I'm not saying this to impress you. I'm saying this to impress upon you. This is what the government doesn't want. They don't want individuals like me and hopefully like you to be sovereign and capable to help out, to support, to be there. Because the moment that we become capable and sovereign and free thinking, that is the moment that they shrink. So listen to me. If you are ready to level up, if you are ready to break out of that inertia of average, maybe you just start with two simple things. Number one, I want you to do my marathon challenge. You know that about 12 years ago, I was like, kept telling myself that I'm not meant to run. I'm not meant to do endurance. I'm just meant to be big and jacked. I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I got to stop telling myself stories. So I hired a running coach, trained for six weeks, and ran the San Diego Marathon. And I broke so many false beliefs that I had about myself and my capabilities. That led me to making more money, becoming a better human, a better father, better everything. Years later, I wrote my book, Man Up which is the six pillars of personal and entrepreneurial leadership. These six pillars of personal entrepreneurial leadership make you a better leader at home, for yourself, in your personal life, and in business. So I wanna give you my book, Man Up, absolutely free, the PDF version. So just go to manup.com forward slash free and you can get the PDF version of my book for free. And I also want you to do my six week marathon challenge, absolutely free. Just follow the training program, the nutrition program that's built in. I've got motivational and mindset accountability videos and audios in there for you. The entire program that my coach built for me is in this program. And there you're gonna go to bedrestcooling.com forward slash challenge. Now we're gonna put both of these in the show notes and here on YouTube, we're gonna drop them in the comment and pin it for you. But I want you to start there. I want you to do something physical and I want you to do something cerebral. So read my book, Man Up, and both things are free. So if you're like, I can't afford it, it's free. It costs you nothing, literally costs you nothing. If you're not gonna make the time to do that and do that, a physical challenge and a cerebral education that makes you a better human, helps you overcome your limiting beliefs, then I question why you're listening or watching this show in the first place. So the links will be in the show notes. They'll be in the comments pinned. And all I ask of you is to go out and do the six week marathon challenge and surprise yourself with how capable you actually are. And then during those six weeks, read my book, Man Up. And when you do, you will be so empowered that you become a force for good. You become unstoppable. Guys and gals, if you got any value from this episode, whether you're listening to it on Spotify or iTunes or on YouTube, I ask one thing of you, and that is to share it, to share it. Because when you share it, we are able to fight the algorithm that stops messages like this of empowerment. And so if you got value, share it. And if you want to go a step further and subscribe and leave a review or a comment, even better. But above, above all, I want you to remember this that average is the enemy, that success is your responsibility, and change can take place in an instant if you are willing to flip the switch. I'll see you next time. <laughs>